I caught up with last night's Jubilee concert and they put on a great show. Brian May hit the right notes as Queen celebrated the Queen. Musical genius Elton John was pitch perfect as always with the rocket man's face blasted onto the front of Buckingham Palace. It was good to have Craig David back and still in show business, surprisingly. I thought he was a painter and decorator now. And Diana Ross did her best Charlie Chaplin impression, miming through her greatest hits. It was the best silent movie I've seen since The Tramp. And Duran Duran were great too, although I preferred them on cocaine. Comedians Stephen Fry and Lee Mack raised the roof with big laughs and Prince Charles spoke movingly about not just mummy, but his dear papa. Charles is sharing a lot more emotion and humanity these days and more of that will serve him well as king. Brilliantly staged, the concert was overall a wonderful success. I agree with the political commentator and academic Matt Goodwin who tweeted the following... He said this is the best show on the planet and it is the very best of Britain. Confident, funny, cheeky, optimistic, diverse, modern, traditional, majestic, all rolled into one. I don't think anybody else could pull this off. Thank you, your majesty. Hashtag Platinum Jubilee. But during every concert, there's always a good time, isn't there, to pop to the loo. And last night, that would have been when Prince William hit the stage. This rightly popular and respected royal just had to say a few words about his amazing grandmother and we would have been left with eager anticipation of this young man ultimately taking the throne. Bring on King William, we would have said. Compared to his turncoat and disloyal brother Harry, William has cut a dignified and discreet figure in the wake of Megxit and the whole royal soap opera. But last night, William, the patron of the Football Association, dropped the ball and scored a massive own goal by lecturing us on climate change, big tech and the billion dollar pharmaceutical industry. Here's what he had to say. Prepare to be bored. The pressing need to protect and restore our planet has never been more urgent. But like her, I am an optimist. Decades of making the case for taking better care of our world has meant that environmental issues are now at the top of the global agenda. This globe-trotting royal, the epitome of privilege, decided to take the moment of his grandmother's jubilee to deliver a sermon on climate change. This high-profile member of the elite, who travels everywhere by private jet, is in no position to wag his finger at the British public who are struggling to make ends meet with the cost of living crisis, partly caused by green policies of which he is doubtless a proponent. This Range Rover driving aristocrat with access to a private train, helicopters and multiple vast properties has clearly been drinking the climate Kool-Aid. It seems that there are many powerful voices globally who want to pursue a land grab of our rights and to dictate our way of life via things like a global pandemic treaty, which would allow an unelected cabal to lock down the country any time they wanted. And they would no doubt like such powers for the climate too. Stay home to save the planet. I can see the posters now. It's what has been characterized by many as the Great Reset, using the pandemic as an excuse to reshape our economy, our society, and our way of life. Well, if Prince William is going to sign up to create a technocratic dystopia, then I might suggest a great reset of our constitution and the scrapping of the monarchy, if this is what it's going to look like. The magic of the Queen is that she has kept her counsel for seven decades. I like this quote from The Guardian's Zoe Williams. She wrote today, in an age where permanently having an opinion is fetishized, The Queen is perhaps the last person whose opinions remain sacredly unknown. Sacredly unknown. Beautifully put. And following his tedious speech last night, we already know far too much about what this young man thinks. Our next king but one can do one. 
I'm all for cleaning up the planet and getting our carbon footprint down. A climate denier, I ain't. Who doesn't want to see investment in the thriving green economy in which British technology is world class? Who doesn't want clean air and who doesn't want to address rising temperatures? But with Britain's proportionally low carbon footprint, 1% of all emissions globally at the moment, perhaps Woke William should focus his attention on the United States, Brazil, India. Why doesn't he go to China and lecture them? Perhaps he could do a speech at Tiananmen Square. Good luck with that. This political intervention last night, during a party and a day of national celebration, was about as welcome as Alec Baldwin at a shooting range. And it was an insult to the millions of Brits who were struggling financially, in particular with their energy bills, which have been inflated by up to 25% as a result of green levies. And now I'm guessing the prince wants hardworking Brits to pay more taxes, have a worse standard of living, unlike him, fine 35 grand for an electric car you can't charge anywhere, and fine 20 grand for an unreliable heat pump boiler that wouldn't warm a single wing in one of his mansions. In what was a definitive game of woke bingo, he mentioned the environment, technology companies and the vaccines. Of course he did. Is the prince, in fact, a puppet of the World Economic Forum or the World Hell Organization, as I like to call them? I hope not. But he's ticking all the right boxes. The green lobby, big tech and big pharma. Royals, in my view, are like Victorian children. They should be seen and not heard. Now, I like Prince William and I support the monarchy fully. I love our monarchy, but only in its current state. I'd like to gently remind William that he is unelected and has no right to get involved in the scientifically debatable and politically contentious climate debates. Now, I don't mind politicians banging on about the environment because it is a political issue. But as with COVID, measures to tackle climate change will have a huge impact on people's lives which is why it must be debated in a democratic forum by elected officials accountable to you and me. Plus, in my view, the so-called experts got it badly wrong on lockdowns. In a few years' time, I suspect you won't find anyone that admits to having supported them. Not many do now. Can we be so sure that mainstream science is right about climate? I personally don't know, but my mind is open. And I certainly won't be told what to think by the BBC, Sky News, Gary Lineker, Meghan Markle or millionaire eco-warrior, the new swampy but with less hair, Prince William. For many, the journey from royalist to Republican will be a short one if William keeps going with this crap. I'm sorry, sir, but may I humbly suggest you put a right royal sock in it.